I just spent all day cleaning my kitchen. If you haven't already, I'm gonna go ahead and link my kitchen deep cleaning video so that way you guys can see all of the effort I put into cleaning this tiny little kitchen. But part two of that is I wanted to make a video of some of my top tips of what you should do if you have a really small kitchen to be able to maximize the space. I have had this kitchen now for 10 months, going from having a full-size kitchen in a two-bedroom house to having this tiny little kitchen in the studio apartment. Like, I've legit never seen a smaller kitchen. These are my only drawers. <laughs> that was a huge challenge for me. I came up with some tips of things that are really helpful to buy or different ways to organize or just different things I do that I think might help you if you're moving into a small kitchen and you have to figure out how the heck you're gonna make everything fit in there. Without further ado, let's just jump into it and show you what I've got. One of the first things I wanna show you is my dishes. So up here is all of my dishes. I only keep four big plates, four small plates, four bowls, and then I have an array of cups. I have five mugs, which is honestly, I need to get rid of some mugs because I do not need that many, but right now they fit, so I'll figure that part out later. Two shot glasses, four knives, four forks, and four spoons, and that is all of my dishes. So for my dishes, I like that everything is up on the single platform. It helps me know where everything is and keeps track of it. I also have two little sauce bowls to use for various occasions and then my reusable straws. But that is it. That is all of my dishes. They all fit on this singular shelf and I really like it because it's really easy for me to keep track of everything. But it also puts all of my dishes out really easily accessible but also visually appealing. Two of the things I really want to point out for my dish section is this little dish rack. It makes it so I'm able to fit double the amount of things here because this is quite a tall space so I was able to stack them above. This came from Ikea. I'll link it down below. I think it was only like $4.99 or something but super handy and it really makes the space a lot more easily accessible. Also I didn't have a drawer to put my silverware in so I just use a mason jar and I keep all of my silverware in the mason jar so it's really easy for me to grab. The next thing I want to point out that has been super helpful was getting all of these jars. These are all different jars. The ones with the clasps came from Ikea but the ones with the silver tops are just regular old mason jars I got from a grocery store and then this one down at the end with the black top this is actually an old coconut oil jar but I have lots of my spices kept in these jars. As you can see, I have some pasta, this is oatmeal, some extra coffee, popcorn, tea, brown sugar, flour. Up in the back back there, I have different curry spices and some dried peanut butter and some cocoa powder. But this is a way for me to put a lot of my dried pantry goods out on this shelf and make them look really pretty and not take up all that space in my cabinet because my cabinet is really small and I wouldn't have space for all of this. It makes it so that way I think these two shelves just look really clean and well organized together. I also have in the back, I have another one of these shelves that I talked about down here. This one is half the size, it's not as wide, but that one holds just like a few more of my jars up there so I can see them from down here and that came from Ikea as well. So going over here, this is my only pantry area. This is all I have. It is not a very big pantry at all. I have to make do with this. I wouldn't have been able to fit all of those dried goods into this pantry. I don't have a huge method to the madness in this pantry. The problem is this fridge sticks out underneath the pantry, so it's really hard for me to reach anything as it is, so I usually have to go ahead and grab a step stool to get up there. Anything that I use on a daily basis, which is like these protein powders, my collagen is lower in reach, and then everything else, I try and just make it so it's the most used, somewhat used, and the least used or stored for later up there. I wish I had better advice for you for my pantry. I don't use a ton of dried goods, so it's just what it is is what it is. A another thing I wanted to point out that helps save space is I got this bowl, and I've had this bowl forever. I got it from a thrift store like three years ago, but this bowl just holds all of my fruit and veggies, and it sits here in the corner, and it's just a place that I can put things in there, and they look properly put away. I try and not keep my potatoes or onions or apples, that kind of stuff in my fridge. I feel like it goes bad faster and also just takes up more room. So having one bowl for your fruits and veggies in the corner, I feel like is a good way to keep it organized looking, but still functional. And if they're right here, I won't forget about them, which is honestly such a problem. Sometimes when my fruits and veggies are in the fridge, I just forget they're there. Talking about my sink really quick, we have just this really small little sink to do all of our dishes. We don't have
have a dishwasher or anything. So what we've done is we got this tub, this is from Ikea, and we just always keep it with soapy warm water in there. So that way if we have a dirty dish, we can put it straight into the tub and let it soak in there. We do have two dish racks. This is the one we use primarily. This one's my favorite one because I'll take it out, put it over on the stove, put all of our dishes away in there, and then while they're drying, it can sit in the sink and they'll drip dry into the sink, which is really handy. We do also have this dish rack, which rolls, and this one just lays flat over the sink so we can put the dishes there to dry. This is hard because this then takes up a lot of our sink area while we're washing dishes, whereas with this one, we can put it off to the side to put the dishes in and then put it back. But this is still a really good solution for someone who's moving into a small space. I really like that it just rolls up and then we can slide it in right here so it's completely out of the way. Just real quick, other things we've got going on around the sink. I have a dog treat bowl, so that way I have my dog treats for my pup, really easily accessible. This is my dish soap. I have kept dish soap in a vinegar pour for as long as I can remember. I think it's just a really pretty way to leave your dish soap out without it looking like you have a big bottle of Dawn on the countertop. I also use the dish soap refill bags for that, which are less plastic than me buying a new bottle each time, so I really like that. This is my Blue Land hand soap. Blue Land is an awesome company that focuses on sustainability. I really like how that hand soap smells, so that's right there. My sponge, this I typically use as a spoon rest, but we got a new sponge, so I'm putting the sponge on it and I think it looks nice. And then this is another one of my tips. I try and keep my utensils down to an absolute minimum, so I just have one wooden spoon, one slotted spoon, one spatula, one ladle. This is like a rubber spatula, but it can also be used as a spoon. It's kind of an all-in-one tool. I use this more than I use anything else in here. I have my tongs, I have a whisk, and I have a lemon juice. And those are all of my most used utensils. I don't have any other big kitchen utensils besides those. Keeping those out and on the countertop means that it's less space that I have to take in my drawers because I have very limited drawer space. Over here in my drawers, this drawer is all my knives and my spoons. I need to organize this drawer better than it is. I've been meaning to do it for forever and I just haven't. I've got all my knives and everything in there and then all my utensils are over there. So this is our little tiny oven, and it honestly works just fine for the two of us. I wouldn't need anything bigger, but the only issue is this drawer is not as wide as the actual oven is, so I cannot fit a baking sheet in there, which is really inconvenient. The solution I've come up with is the baking sheets just live in the oven, and I think some people do this like on the regular anyways, but now I don't really have a choice, but all I keep is a pizza pan and a cookie sheet, and those are my only two pans for the oven, and those just stay in there and I pull them out when I'm gonna use them, put my food on them, put them back in, wash them, dry them, put them away back in the oven. So they live in there all the time. I've been asked before to film how I organize my fridge and that sounds like a great video, except I don't really have a method to this madness. So I'll explain to you what it's like currently, but honestly, things change. Here you go. On the top layer, I typically keep breakfasty items for some reason. So that typically means my eggs will be up here if I have a full carton. If I no longer have a full carton and I can fit them in the door, then I do put my eggs in the door. I also usually have egg whites, cream cheese for bagels or toast, and then I always have a loaf of Ezekiel bread. Just about every single day my breakfast is Ezekiel bread, an egg, and egg whites on the bread. That's it, I'm a simple lady. The next one down, right now I have some brownies, but this is where leftovers would usually go. Then I have this little tray and I usually keep this filled with anything that's for Alex. So it has his cheese, because he eats a lot of cheese and crackers, and bagels for him, because those are things that he can just grab and snack on on his own. Then next down, this bag holds my soy rizo. Soy rizo is so freaking messy, so it had to be somewhere where the bag could be standing, so that's just down there, even though it probably should go on the breakfast one. And then over here is my every plate box. I love these, it's so convenient, and as much as I hate all the extra cardboard, being able to just take out the box or slide it in is so, so easy. Next one down, if I have loose veggies, they usually go in here. We're going out of town tomorrow, so I don't have really anything to show you, but typically loose veggies would be in there. Lettuce, spinach, different things like that. Right now we just have carrots. Then I have my oat milk because it's too tall for anywhere else. And Alex keeps this big jug of water. He just refills it every time. But he really likes cold water and we don't have any way to get cold water. So that lives there. Then in the bottom drawer, this is where I keep my meats. These are the meat for my every plate. So I usually just toss these down to the bottom. So that way they don't get on anything else. In the door, I have like an obscene amount of extra condiments from all my every plate boxes because I don't always use all the condiments that they give me. So those are up there. Butter on this one. Then here we have some salad dressings from Trader Joe's. So the balsamic vinegar one. Ooh, this one's so good. The soy ginger vinaigrette, highly recommend. This is also really good on chicken. And we have some maple syrup down below. This is for me to make my own salad dressings. 
the jalapeno sauce from Trader Joe's, the barbecue sauce from Trader Joe's. Can you tell I'm a fan? Some sriracha, more barbecue sauce, soy sauce, and hot sauce. Then down on the very bottom, we just have some buffalo sauce, Zing Zing Bloody Mary mix. If you like Bloody Marys, this is the best Bloody Mary mix of all time. Just trust me on it. Trader Joe's spicy brown mustard. I love mustard more than anything. It is my favorite condiment. And then this second water jug because Alex drinks a ton of water. My freezer, however, is a mess. And right now it's just filled with a bunch of snow monkey frozen dessert that they sent me. That's a lost cause. We're not even, we're just gonna close that one and pretend it's not in there. Look at how small small this freezer is though. Literally smaller than a shoebox. It's crazy. I guess I'll talk about it because I'm just kind of on a roll, but in these drawers, I keep my measuring cups. This is from Ikea and it just perfectly fits above the drawer. Usually I have more stuff in here, but we have balsamic vinegar, some tahini spice. This I got recently. This holds my olive oil and then there's a pump in it so I can make my olive oil into a spray olive oil and I never have to continue buying the spray cans. I can just use this over and over. And then coconut oil. I use coconut oil both in cooking a lot when I'm doing like different Asian dishes and whatnot, but I also use it as a moisturizer on my body. Almost every time I shower, I use coconut oil afterwards and it's the best. I love it so much. Then down in this bottom drawer, this is Alex's snack drawer. So this is just a bunch of like chips, crackers, protein bars. I try and stay out of there the best I can. I'm not perfect. And the last place that I have to show you is under the kitchen sink. So this one has always been kind of a challenge. I feel like it's just one of those places that gets messy really easily, but I cleaned it today. So now you can see it. Ah, I'm gonna grab a flashlight. Under the sink, first we have our trash bags right here. Then back there, that is where I keep lots of our random cleaning supplies, not like the bottles and stuff. This is where I keep like rags, extra filters for our Roomba, dusters, things like that. This bag up here is filled with random dog stuff. So I have like extra dog treats, Louis leash in there. The bag that I put his food in when we travel, just random dog stuff like that. Back in the corner over there, there's another one of these bags and it holds all of my reusable shopping bags. So I can just reach back there and grab them whenever I go out to go grocery shopping. And then down here, this is where I keep, so my multi-purpose cleaner, my window cleaner, and this is my refill for my dish soap. And then Louie's dog food right here. I wasn't gonna show this side of my kitchen because I was feeling lazy and because my lighting sucks. But stop being lazy 2020, I'll show you. So this piece is probably my most asked about piece. This is my rolling island cart. It has a lip over here so we can pull bar stools up to it, which is really nice. Then right here is a little spice rack area. This is a dish towel area. In my apartment tour, my trash can was here and everyone hates me for it because my dish towel touched it. I do not keep it there. I'm sorry it was there right then, but it actually lives over here. It's in the corner. It doesn't touch my paper towels, don't worry. But I keep that there and then I fold up my used cardboard boxes and put them there so that way I can take them down to recycling. And then over on this side, there's drawers and the cabinets and then the three shelves. These are my most everyday spices. I just have salt, pepper, like everyday seasoning. Then I use a lot of red chili peppers, the everything bagel seasoning. I use that just about every day and the garlic powder. I use that a ton too. Then in here, because I love seasonings so much, I got for Christmas Borsari salts. They come in so many flavors and they were a Christmas present. So I've been trying a bunch of them and they are really, really good. I use those, but I have a ton of them. Then just like all of my other seasonings, a lot of them are from Trader Joe's. This is my seasonings drawer. Those are my every single day use seasonings. This drawer is a bit more of a mess, but this is my like storage drawer, I guess. I have some plastic bags here. I honestly bought these plastic bags four years ago. I bought them when Alex and I first started dating. I got like a big pack from Costco and I'm still using them. So I think this is my last one. And then I'm never buying plastic bags again because I use these Keepa bags a lot. And then I also use these silicone bags all the time. So I really have zero need for plastic bags. I stopped getting saran wrap. I do not need that anymore, but I do still use aluminum foil for my trays when I cook. Then I have my knife sharpener, my zoodle maker, and then just some napkins from like Chipotle. So I can take those if we ever go eat out of the house picnicking or something. We never picnic, I don't know why I keep them. Down here, I have our set of Pyrex bowls. If you don't have Pyrex bowls, you are missing out. These are the most handy things ever. I use them for everything. They come in so many different sizes. They can go in the oven, in the freezer. The little one is like a good size to take soup for lunch to work. The big one is massive. These were from my boyfriend's grandma. She gave them to us as a gift and they are so convenient. I use them all the time. Speaking of which, down on the bottom are my Ikea ones. These are in different sizes too. This is like a casserole dish, which I use all the time. and it has 
has a lid so I can take it with me. Then there's three different sizes of these glass ones. One of them's holding the brownies in the fridge right now. Also again, freezer, oven, dishwasher, whatever. These can go in everything and I love them. These are my two most used containery items. And here I just have, this is my strainer. This is from Ikea. This is the best thing ever. I got this in my first studio and I love it. Then I have like a loaf pan and a muffin pan. And then these are candlesticks. I got them from Trader Joe's. They sell them for $2.99. We just have some candle holders and they're really pretty in there. So those live there. Over here. Whew, I'm winded. All right. We have my Nutribullet. We have some random plastic Tupperware in the back and some meal prep containers. I don't use those that much, but they are there if I need them. I don't really need the space right now. But my Nutribullet and then my Instant Pot. I use this thing all the time. Rice, stews, hard boiled eggs, you name it. The Instant Pot is used and I love it so much. Then lastly, over here, up top, this is all of our water bottles, our protein shakers, our thermoses, that kind of stuff. And then on the bottom, these are my pots that couldn't fit underneath the oven. Right now, underneath the oven, I just have one pot and then these are the only two pans that I own. And that's everything. I honestly didn't even know I had that much to explain about my tiny kitchen. I feel like this started off as a hacks and then just kind of went to a tour. But I hope you liked it anyways. I love cooking. I cook dinner for us literally every single night. It's my way of winding down. I love putting on a a trashy reality TV show and just chopping and cooking and coming up with a new recipe. It's my favorite. So I love my kitchen. It works really well for me. If you have any questions about any of the products or anything, please comment down below. Everything I've showed you, I highly recommend it. I use them all every single day. If you liked this video and you like seeing kitchen content and organization, please give it a thumbs up. I just want to make content that you guys want to watch. So that means a lot to me. And if you haven't already, please hit the big red subscribe button. Your support really means so much. And when you support me, it means that I can get money so I can make food in my tiny kitchen. Thank you guys so, so much for the support. You have no idea how much it means. You guys are everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I'll see you next time.